Hello and welcome to this introduction to Arduino. In this chapter, we'll talk about motors, specifically how they work and share a conceptual demonstration of how we can control them using an Arduino. This is the eighth chapter in a 10-part series developed for local hackerspace here in Tucson, Arizona. Arduino is an ideal platform for mounting sensors and motors, perfect for building simple robots that interact with their environment, or for hacking broken toys purchased from your local Goodwill. For some demonstrations from my own shop, please see the links shown in the description of this video. To get started, this is the motor I'll be using to go over its principles of operation. This was a little kit my goddaughter gifted me from Argentina, and it's great for demonstrations. And these are the parts I'll be referring to later on in this presentation. But before we get into it, uh, let's see it in action. So, in order to understand how this motor works, we need to understand the magnetic fields that are created both by the stationary field magnets attached to the sides of the motor and the electromagnet that's induced by current traveling through the wire that's part of the rotor. Now, if you're wondering what I mean by an electromagnet, just remember that anytime you have current flowing through a wire, that flow will induce a magnetic field. So we can use electricity to create a magnet, or in this case, an electromagnet, via the rotor. Initially, let's just look at the magnetic field that's generated by the field magnets alone. We can do this by keeping the motor brushes disconnected from any power. And we can study this by placing an index card over the motor and then spread some iron filings over the card. The iron filings will align themselves with the magnetic field created by the field magnets. And this is what we see we can see iron filings are light enough that they align themselves with the field created by the stationary magnets on the motor. And this shows a more general display of the electric field if we were to draw lines through the alignment of those iron filings. Next, let's talk about the magnetic field that's generated when we apply current to the motor. Current will travel through the brushes where they make contact with the commutator and on through the coils that are part of the rotor. Current traveling through a conductor, such as the wires that make up part of that rotor, will generate a magnetic field around that rotor. Let's observe the effects of this electrically induced magnet using our iron filing index card trick. First, notice that I've removed the stationary magnets from the motor and that neither of my battery leads are attached to the motor brushes such that there's no flow of current through the rotor. Now, if I place my card and iron filings on the motor with the leads disconnected, you can see that there's no magnetic field associated with the rotor. However, if I attach my leads to the brushes, now a magnetic field is generated by the current flowing through the wire that makes up the rotor. Now, if we have current flowing through the rotor due to voltage applied through the brushes, and we also have a magnetic field induced by our field magnets, we can have two magnetic fields occupying the same space. And what's interesting about this is that those fields may be aligned in the same direction as shown in this graphic. And what you may remember from playing with magnets as a kid is that likes repel where opposites attract. In this context, the two fields is currently aligned will oppose one another and create a force that induces motion. In this case, the motion is a rotation of the axle of our motor. This rotation will cause the commutator to spin. And because of a small gap of metal on the commutator, the cathode and anode from our power supply will momentarily lose connection with the circuit and the electromagnetic field will turn itself off. 
However, the momentum will keep the commutator spinning and eventually contact will be made once again with the cathode and anode of our power supply. Only now, the current flow will be reversed. In turn, this will cause the electromagnetic field to reverse until it's in a more favorable position relative to the stationary magnetic field. Now you can see that the fields are opposite one another in alignment and thus the force on the rotor is relieved. I thought it'd be interesting to follow this rotating magnetic field using the iron filings index card trick, so here goes. Here you can see the two fields are misaligned, so the rotor will begin to turn, and with it, so will the electromagnetic field associated with that rotor. Eventually, the field will come full circle, and the design of the commutator will result in the two fields eventually being properly aligned with one another. So if the fields are aligned, what keeps the motor turning? It's the momentum induced by the initial rotation that ensures the axle with the attached rotor and commutator keeps spinning. When that happens, the electromagnetic field will be reversed again. And then the misaligned field will induce rotation once again, keeping the motor spinning. This will go on and on until voltage is removed from the brushes. But while there's current flowing through the coil that makes up that rotor, we can take advantage of that rotation to do work through attached gears, fans, pulleys, cams, or drills. When we want to turn this off, we simply shut down the motor by turning off the flow of current flowing through the rotor. And this is where Arduinos give us yet another opportunity to do something truly extraordinary. Arduinos give us the ability to turn that electric field on or off in response to sensors or other inputs we define all at our arbitrary whims. Next, I'll demonstrate how a motor is turned on and off by physically connecting and disconnecting power leads from my motor brushes, while at the same time showing the code in a sketch that would essentially do the same. That just about does it for this chapter. In chapter 9, we'll actually follow the flow of current managed by Arduino to give us a better understanding of how these microcontrollers control motors.